Paul was saying in Philippians 4.13, God has given me the explosive ability to engage the resistance that God wants me to get involved in. Listen, if there is no resistance in your life, then I would have to begin to question, are you doing anything to fulfill your destiny or calling on this earth? Because I look at the scripture and it basically says that the godly shall suffer persecution. Now I know that's a new concept to the Western church. We haven't had to deal with actual persecution as Western Christians. We've been so blessed in this country for 400 years because we were founded on religious liberty, which is the freedom to worship how we choose, where we choose, and when we choose, that we have gotten so blessed with the blessings of liberty that we have forgotten the price for freedom. That somebody had to get on that Mayflower and cross that ocean. Somebody had to tell King George III, we're not gonna put up with your ridiculousness anymore somebody had to take up a musket somebody had to load the musket somebody had to take up arms and go to war to ensure the right that we can worship in freedom in this nation somebody had to do it but we're so many generations into the blessing of liberty that now it is fallen upon us that someone in this generation is going to have to rise up and engage the resistance and begin to fight for liberty once again. Reagan said that freedom is no longer uh, further away than one generation from extinction. He says we have to fight for freedom in every single generation. I believe in my lifetime, this is the first time that my generation, your generation, has had to actually stand up and say we're going to have to fight. If we're going to remain free, we're going to have to fight. If we're going to be able to worship in freedom, somebody's going to have to stand up. Somebody's going to have to go to the school board. Somebody's going to have to go to the city council. Somebody's going to have to stand up and go down to Austin and tell those jokers what is what. You're like, can I just go back to sleep where it was in the sweet by and by? No, you cannot go back to sleep because what will happen is when you wake up, you're going to find yourself in a concentration camp and it may not be a, with barbed wire and razor wire and Nazis holding guns, but I guarantee you it's in the prison camp of ideology, ideas, of vaccine freedom, of what you can do and cannot do with your body, of what you can and cannot do with your health, of what you can and cannot do with your kids. What happens when the state steps in and says we don't recognize parental rights anymore? We're the wards of your children. We will raise your children in Nazi America the way we want to disciple your kids. Parents have no rights anymore. Tell me that's not a concentration camp. Tell me that's not prison, the prison of thoughts. You see, we're fighting a modern warfare. We're not fighting World War II warfare. We're fighting in the war in the rink of ideas. We're in the technology age where freedom is influence. Freedom or slavery is based on who influences the masses to drink the Kool-Aid. The question is, is the church gonna regain her place of influence in this culture before it's too late? Are we actually going to regain our place of influence in this culture? And you're like, okay, well, how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked because